Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime. And I am your host as always, Professor Prime. Today we're going to talk about math in The Good Place. The Good Place is one of my favorite shows of all time. And it became so instantaneously. Today, I want to talk about how math connects with and relates to The Good Place. And this is how this is going to go. So, I'm going to talk about how I feel about The Good Place throughout the video. Um, and I'm going to start there and, you know, just give some general feelings and then let that develop throughout. In addition to that, I'll take those initial feelings that I'll be talking about and let that pivot into the premise. And with that premise, I want to talk about how math is crucial to that premise. And how it ends up playing a role in how the characters grow and develop throughout the series and how it plays a role in the series itself and you know I could talk about things in a meta way too and that should happen in this video as well and so before I get too far into it if you have not seen The Good Place if you've not finished The Good Place there absolutely will be spoilers ahead and you should not watch this video until you have finished The Good Place. Like, you should binge it. You should binge it hard. But seriously, I do think it is better to, like, kind of go in there without, like, you know, um, knowing everything. Than to go in there blind. Um, so, yeah. We're going to get into it. And again, there will be spoilers. In fact, there will be spoilers after this point. Let's take it away. So... Uh, with The Good Place, I, it had been on my list for a while. Um, I finally found time during spring break to watch it. And I binged it. I binged it hard. I binged it one season a day kind of hard. I'm not even kidding on that. Like, I literally watched one season each day. It's that good. And yeah, it was that serious. <laughs> So um, I had um, fun with it. I had a blast. And it's been on my mind since I've watched it. And that was about a month ago. And this video has been on my mind and slowly coming together. Um, so with that in mind, let's talk about the premise and how things kind of go from there. So the idea is there are several characters that we focus on within this series with the de facto main character being Eleanor. And with Eleanor, when the show opens... She get, you know, sorry, when the show opens, she's dead. And she finds herself in an office and greeted by Michael, um, another one of the main characters. And so, you know, he lets her know that she's in a good place. But there's been a mistake. Uh, you know, she wasn't supposed to be there. She got confused with a distant Eleanor and um, that's interesting, right? But this is where it gets particularly interesting to me because how are you determined, sorry, how is it determined that you're in the good place in the first place? Well, it's very mathematical, very logical, very cold in a way. Now, they never get into like um, who actually designed the universe in the system and why it's designed the way it does, but it's a point system. You do your actions throughout your life and you accrue certain good points, certain bad points. And I don't know what the threshold is, but if you reach a certain amount of good points, you get to the good place. And throughout eternity, you get what you want. Um, if you don't, you go to the bad place where you're tortured for eternity instead. And that gets fascinating. Your eternal fate is determined by cold, hard math. And they touch on that, and they, they get more involved with it as it should go, who goes on. So, um, you know, if you're watching me at this point, you've probably seen The Good Place. Um, if not, you know, spoilers like I was saying, the idea is that they're not really in The Good Place, right? They're in The Bad Place. They're being tortured. You have Eleanor. You have Chidi. You have Tani and Jason, and all of them are there for different reasons. And I find it fascinating because while Eleanor and Jason are more outwardly messed up people and you know arguably deserve to go to the bad place 
you have people like Chidi, who's very well-meaning, and people like Tahani, who donated a lot in her life. And as a result, there was a lot of good that happened to people. But it wasn't just actions that mattered. It was the intent. And it also just like, um, you know, a lot of complications to it. Uh, both matter, right? Action and intent. So in Tahani's case, she did a lot of good, but she did it to kind of compete with her sister. And that's interesting because it's like, you would think the good wouldn't matter to some degree, but because of her intent, she ended up in the bad place. Whereas Chidi, someone who's like very, very well-meaning, but has a lot of difficulty making decision-making, he gets to be in the bad place because his inability to make decisions on occasion ended up hurting people. And Jason and Eleanor both did a lot of questionable things in their life. And so you would think, though, that there would be layers to it, right? And that ends up being a focal point of the show. So throughout the show, you know, you have people going to the good place and the bad place when they're died, and you have their fate dictated by the amount of good points or bad points that they get. And having that premise and having that knowledge affects the characters greatly and it shapes how things go and to me that's utterly fascinating um and then there's all like um the moral theory stuff in the show so you know they focus um at least you know for most of the show on three western moral theories uh you know they focus on virtue-based ethics like you know aristotle did and that whole crew, uh, you know, you should like, like um, virtues, you know, um, and go for them, you know. So, like, being a good person could entail honesty and courage and, you know, empathy and so on and so forth. You know, you can make arguments for different things. It's like, oh, well, if you embody this or you embody that or you're going for this or you're going for that and your virtues outweigh your vices, maybe... You know, that makes you a good person. Um, or then you have consequentialism. Um, you have utilitarianism as a result. It's like, oh, hey, your actions dictate what happens. And I find it interesting within the show because um, the way the universe is structured, action and intent matter. Um, and I find that fascinating. So anyway, with uh, consequentialism, you know, you have utilitarianism. And with utilitarianism, it's like, well, um, what brings the greatest amount of good to the greatest amount of people? Or, like, alternately, what causes the majority of people to have the least amount of pain? Um, and that's the usual interpretation of utilitarianism. But if you go even further back to the original form by Jeremy Bentham, which I've mentioned in another video, it gets very mathy with that. It's just like, so, you know, you can determine the map behind the good and the bad um, and how it goes. And I find that fascinating because it plays a factor into how that universe works. Because with utilitarianism, it's like, how much good did you bring to people in this case? Like, how much bad did you bring it up? Because all that kind of matters to your points. So it's just like, um, when they talk about consequentialism and how that works as a whole in the show, I find it fascinating because it kind of ties back to Bentham's utilitarianism in a way. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, with the last um, major moral theory or Western moral theory that they talk about is deontology. So, you know, it's your duty to do this. It's your duty to do that. And it's like, which duty matters more? How does that get assigned, you know? Um, so I feel like all of this leads to some interesting discussions. And it leads to some interesting things. And throughout that first season, you know, um, it's mostly about Eleanor interacting with the other human characters and um, trying to be a better person and earn her spot in the good place while Michael is actually torturing them and kind of getting them to subtly torture each other because they're actually in the bad place. And he has Janet at his side for that. And she ends up getting a lot of growth and development throughout the series. And um, that being said, so, like, math plays a role in that, right? In how the show is set up. And then as you go on, it still continues. Um, in the second season, a big part of it is, like, them 
finding out and then getting their memories reset. And then it gets fascinating because it's like um, every time they get reset, they start from a certain point, but then they have different experiences. So they become different versions of themselves. So they're getting wiped and wiped and wiped. And that comes back later. And, um, you know, there's math and all that too because it's like they, I think, found out they were in the bad place 803 times. Um, I think that was the exact number. If not, it's somewhere over 800. And here's what gets interesting. So during this 800, I'm sorry, during like the 803 times that they um, found out they were in a bad place, the time that had transpired in Earth years would be around 300 years, which is insane and almost inconceivable to think about. Like being around that long, and you know, there's like different versions of themselves, and later that comes back because they end up being, you know, all of the versions of themselves um, by the end of it. And as we progress, you know, um, they get a second chance to prove themselves um, by uh, Michael going back and stopping them from dying and creating an alternate timeline, and that too is fascinating. And by the time that they have to, you know, try one last ditch effort to get into the good place, they end up having to like point out a lot of flaws in the system. And then once that is established, okay, so the system is flawed, the math might be flawless, but like the context is key. So they have that system that determines the good and bad, but there is a certain nuance that does get missed. So you might have, um, a person that's like outwardly awful and you know does horrible actions has horrible intent but you have you might have someone who means well but their actions have awful consequences you might have someone who gets coffee and there might be a horrible story in how that coffee is produced and as a result because they bought the coffee because they drink the coffee they would lose good points there's a flaw in that system and they talk about that sort of thing in the show and they talk about time and how that works and how it operates. Like there's time on earth and then there's time in the afterlife which flows differently. Jeremy Bermy, like you know, it flows in a weird like kind of loop but there's that circle out there. <laughs> also throughout that show, the time knife, man, that, <laughs> that was a funny thing. But um, if I kind of like pull it together, the idea is Throughout the show, you know, they're all like um, given a chance to be better people just like through perseverance and being together. And so when they have to design a better system, the whole thing is like, well, we give people time, time to be good, time away from, you know, money struggles, time away from having to worry about this and that. Because at that point, right, they're dead. They don't have to, learn, have to worry about all the moral, sorry, um, the mortal concerns. So they're put in this position. It's like, okay, they're tested. And then if they figure out they're in a bad place, maybe giving them a chance to adjust and grow and develop. And then you get into the whole idea of like how um, the good place is developed, how the bad place is developed, or rather the neighborhoods within them. And, well, I guess them too, but it's like they have to be designed, right? Um, and there's math and how you would construct a neighborhood in these places, how you would be an architect. And I find that fascinating. I find it very interesting. And um, wow, so far this video, not quite longer than I thought, but just um, I'm surprised I'm at the time where I'm at because I'm on my cell phone and I'm looking at that. But um, if I jump over to the meta side of things, this shows a comedy and they have a certain amount of time to tell the story that they want to tell as well as work in the jokes. And so, you know, there's math in that. And there's math in how everything is structured. So it's like, hey, we have like about 22 minutes, an episode or so, um, to tell our story for this episode. We have four seasons, pretty much 13 episodes in each of those seasons, um, and 22 minutes for each. So it's like, how do we want to have the plot play out? How do we want to have the jokes constructed and playing out and tying that in into the drama into the fantasy of it um and i think that's fascinating so with the good place you have math involved 
and very ingrained in the show within itself. And then you have math and constructing that show. And then if you are um, someone who like, is on either side of the show, there, there's so much math in that. Because there's math in how the show is constructed and all that. But, you know, if you're writing, you know, you got to figure out all the things that I said when constructing the show and how you want to tell your story. Um, if you're acting, there's the idea of timing. There's the idea of dedicating your time. How much time are you dedicating to this? How much are you getting paid for this? How much is it impacting this person, that person, and how everything connects? And that's fascinating to me. And then if you're someone like me and you're watching the show, um, even, you know, watching it is a mathematical decision. Because I had to say, how much time do I have to watch this? How much time do I want to take out of my day? And um, with streaming platforms and just really everything, right? You're paying this or you're paying that. And so for me, I'm like, I finally found time to watch it. And I, since I was on break, I had time to just kind of go wild with it. So I decided on watching one season a day, 13 episodes a day at about like 22 minutes a pop. And I, you know, budget out the time for that and went for it. So it's like whether you're making the show, whether you're watching the show, or whether you're in that universe of, like of the show, math is everywhere in, in everything, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, The Good Place. There's a lot of math in it, and I don't know if people automatically think about math when they think about The Good Place. But um, that being said, I would like to kind of end by just talking about it for a little while longer. One of the interesting points when you reach the end is just like, this idea that now that the characters finally made it into the good place, what do they do? You know, because you're there for attorney. Attorney is a long time. It's years and years and years and years. Now they measure, sorry, they measure things in Jeremy Burmies for the afterlife, so you don't get an exact sense of how long it is. But the idea is that it's a very, very long time. So if they're going several rotations around that, they could be around for millions, if not billions of our years. And in that time, they're finding so much to do until they're content. And the good place, when they finally get there, they find out their system still isn't perfect. Like, so once you fix the point problem, you get in there and you have all this time to do this and all this time to do that. Then it's like, you start to have an issue, and I found this fascinating because, like, I mean, I don't think it's an issue for everyone in a good place, but it's an issue worth noting. There's this issue that, like, you will become less of yourself because you end up getting so satisfied on a regular basis. Everything that you could ever want is there. And so you get so focused and so um, into being happy that, you know, you might start to lose yourself with that. You slowly but surely over years and years and years, millions, if not billions, if not more, start to become less of you. So then what do you do? Because you died, right? Your, your mortal life ended, but your being is still there, but you're becoming less of what you were. And you know, there's math and how all that operates. But then, you know, they had an out. They'll let certain people, I'm sorry, like if you want to get out of a good place, um, then you no longer exist. Um, but you have a choice in it. You know, and you become part of the universe. So I guess it's better to say you exist, but in a different form. And in the end, you know, you get in a better sense of how that goes. And I think there's so much to say about that. Because the idea wasn't like, okay, everyone just stops having an afterlife. It's like, if you want to literally stay there for all of eternity, you can. If you're never unhappy, if you remain yourself the whole time, you can absolutely stay there. But if you feel yourself sliding, if you feel yourself content, and you know that you might lose who you are, then you can have that choice to continue and just let yourself drift, or you can decide to take that control and exist in a different form, a form that interacts with the mortal world. And so it goes. And with that, you know, you might be subtly influencing this or that event in that mortal world, and that contributes to how people act within that mortal world, and that contributes to how they, sorry, how many points they are getting to get into the good place or the bad place. And um, then, because of how they resign in the system, if they get to the bad place, there's a chance to get out now and earn their spot in the good place. And the math goes on in a very interesting and kind of cyclical way. And 
life within itself kind of feels that way, right? Cyclical sometimes, but interesting. And I know for me, someone who does in fact struggle with like ideas of death, um, it's a fascinating idea to like look at the show. And I saw when I saw like the last episode, I kind of had to pace myself. I kind of had to pause at different points because the last episode for me was deeply emotional. It hit me. It hit me in a very deep and powerful way. I am still thinking about it. Um, and it's, that's not a bad thing, but it just it makes me think. Um, and one of the ways that I deal with the idea that someday we're going to die is that um, instead of being hardcore nihilist, which for the record, I was at some point in my life, um, I like to think of it this way. Do I want to die? No, I don't want to die. I don't want the people that I care about to die. I just would rather it not be a thing. But when that time comes, whether it's me or someone else, our actions are our actions. They are part of the universe. And when we pass, even if those actions are forgotten, they impacted how the universe was. And even if we don't exist in the form that we are used to, the truth is we are changing literally every day. And when we die, we're just no longer conscious. We don't think of ourselves as ourselves. You know, like we think of ourselves in the past tense when we think about what happens when we die. It's like, oh, we were here. You would still be there when you die, just in a different form. You'd still be part of the universe. Everything is connected. And I feel like it's very um, easy to kind of go down a rabbit hole. It's like, well, nothing matters. I do all the stuff and then I die. But it's like, but you still existed. You still matter. You're still going to be influencing the universe in ways that you don't comprehend. So even if we're not aware of what happens when we die, we still impact this universe one way or another. Whether we realize that now or whether people realize that in the future. And that's how I kind of think about things. And when I think about The Good Place, one of the coolest things to come out of that show is that there's this idea that, okay, in life, it's hard to be a good person. And even when you're trying your best to be a good person, you might be doing something very, very indirectly that contributes to someone else's suffering. And it's hard to predict that. But what do we do? We try. We try and we try. We try to be good people. We try to go on. We try to keep the fight alive. And I feel like there's a lot of optimism in that show. I feel like there's a lot of interesting things in that show. Like, you start off in your cast. They're dead. They're angels. They're demons. Like, eventually you get back to the mortal world in that show. But, like, it's not how it starts. And it gets interesting. Because it's like, well, what happens after that? Who knows? But um, what I do know is, for now, I'm alive. And I make a conscious decision each day to try to be my best self. I am not perfect, and I have not done everything correctly. Um, and I haven't done everything morally correct. But I try. And I try to get other people to try. And I try to get people to see their potential. And while I'm trying to be my best self, I try to pull out on others and I gotta say I've been pretty good at that so far because I feel like sometimes people just need to push a lot of people are um, you know more capable than they could ever imagine and so I feel like I want to help people realize that about themselves as I'm pushing forward because you know there's certain things we can't control and death is typically one of them like you know there's that joke that like uh, you know only thing certain in life is death and taxes it's like no it's just death taxes are something that weren't there before death was there as soon as life was you know and so um i think now this is officially my longest video but um yeah i just wanted to say that there's a lot of math in the good place there's a lot of moral theory in the good place there's a lot of philosophy in general in the good place there's a lot of optimism and a lot to enjoy and even though that last episode rock me to my very core it was very good it was very powerful and the good place is a show that i would recommend to like anyone and i'm glad that i watched it i'm glad that i watched it when i did so that being said i hope that you have stuck throughout the whole video and that you gained something from it 
I hope that you realize that, you know, the sun is always shining, whether we see it or not. Although it's nice to see it. And when it rains, we don't always like the effects of the rain. We don't always like to go through the rain, but we have flowers because of the, of the rain. We have food because of the rain. We have a lot of good things that come out of rain. And yeah, have a great day. And remember that you are more capable than you think. Even if you think you're already pretty capable, you can always do even more. The future is yours. Professor Prime out.